In honor of the gospel lesson, please remain standing as today we read from Mark's gospel, chapter 9, I'll be reading verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. <clears throat> then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. We already felt your presence, Lord, in this place. Through the sweet sounds of children's and youth's voices, we've heard the prayers, we've heard the scripture. We've sung the great hymns of the faith. Our hearts have been touched. Now, Lord, we ask you to help us to listen. To listen. To your word that you would have us hear. And help us, Lord, to not only listen, but to be prepared to respond and to do what it is you have called us to do. To be what it is you've caused us to want to be. Help us to hear, Lord. Help us to be faithful in the task to follow you wherever you may lead. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I learned one thing about moving south again from the North Georgia area. And that is my problems with pollen begin now in February instead of March, like they did back later. <laughs> So I'm going to do my best to make it through this sermon this morning with a bit of a scratchy voice. But in the meantime, I've asked Bert Guy. I said, Bert, I said, I have my notes up here. If I begin to fall apart, would you come up and take, uh, take the rest of the sermon? Bert did not know I asked him that until just now. So he's praying really hard that I will make it through this particular sermon. But I'll do my best and we'll get through this this morning. And thank you for your patience and putting up with my scratchy voice today. But we hear a scripture lesson this morning where Peter, James, and John, the disciples of Jesus, have gone up on the mountaintop of Jesus, and there they are witnesses to a spectacular and amazing event. Jesus is transfigured. His body takes on this, this unearthly appearance. And then in the midst of this vision, there appears with Jesus the prophet Elijah and also Moses. Through Moses, we see Jesus as the one who was sent by God to fulfill the law. Through Elijah, we see in Jesus the one sent by God to fulfill all the messages and all the prophecies of those who were prophets. The disciples see this happening. But they don't know what it means. They don't know what to say. They're terrified. But Peter as he often did, even though he didn't know what to say, he said something anyway. He suggested Jesus that, well, well, Lord, why don't we build three dwellings here? Why don't we build three monuments to this, this tremendous occasion, this marvelous event, to designate the place where this actually happened? For Peter, like it is for a lot of us, this was a Kodak moment. A time in a sense to get out the camera and take a picture so that he could remember along with others this very special occasion. I know most of you are like me. We're like that. Are we? we like to have a picture of everything. My wife Anne's one of the worst or the best, whatever you want to refer to it as. 
You walk into our house, and you can walk through our house and literally watch our children go grow up as you walk down the halls. There's pictures from the time they were born to the time they're, they're, they were, well, last week. There's pictures. And every memento that they bring home from school, I don't care if it's a pencil scratch or uh, one color down, uh, she keeps it. I found files this thick of everything the boys have done, everything Croft has done. She likes to remember, as some of us do, she's not the only guilty one here. We like to remember, we like to recall some of the things that have happened, especially in our children's lives. And I want you to hear this morning, there's no problem with remembering. There's no problem with taking a picture every now and then. It's good to preserve our past. It's good to look back and to be able to recall things that have happened. But I think it's important for us to ask ourselves this morning, is it possible that we miss something in the moment when so much of our attention is focused on trying to capture the moment? Peter, James, and John were witnesses to an extraordinary event. And Peter couldn't just stand by and let this happen. He had to have some memento. He had to take a picture. He couldn't just stop by or stand by and let this happen without being able to remember it in some way. But his idea to build dwellings for Jesus, Elijah, and Moses clearly shows he has yet to fully understand the mission of Jesus. You see, in his eyes, he saw these three individuals as equal. He did not see Jesus as being set apart. He just wanted to remember all three of them for this special moment of being together. But then a cloud overshadows them. This cloud comes down from the heavens, and this voice speaks. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. God didn't say, Peter, grab the camera. Let's get a picture of the three of them right over here by the cedar tree. That'd be a nice shot. He doesn't say to Peter, we need something to remember this moment. He says to Peter, <coughs> Bert, you ready? <laughs> he says to Peter, I'll get some water, but I'm going to get some water. <clears throat> he says to Peter, listen. Listen, stop trying to capture the moment. Stop trying to do all these things. Sit down. Listen to what Jesus would have you hear. Listen to what he would say to you in this moment. You see, the disciples have heard Jesus speak. They've been with him now for some weeks. They'd heard his message. They'd seen him heal. They, they, they knew he had authority and there was power that he carried that was unknown to anybody at that particular time. They, they were just overwhelmed by all that he was doing. But yet they really didn't understand and it shows, especially in this moment, who Christ was. They didn't understand what Christ had been sent to do because they'd already heard, just several days before, they'd heard Jesus say, that he was going to lose his life, that he would experience great suffering, that the time would come when he would be arrested and he would be killed, he would be crucified. He followed that up by telling his disciples, those who want to save their lives, well, they have to lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, well, they'll save it. And Peter, good old Peter, he wants nothing to do with this particular conversation. He wants Jesus to start talking, start acting like a Messiah. To stop talking about suffering and rejection and giving up his life. He wants people to see and remember the greatness of Jesus, the glory of Jesus. To see Jesus as the one who will overcome all the adversity. To see Jesus as the one who will come and overthrow the authority of the day. To see Jesus as truly the Messiah, someone to be glorified, not rejected. Now here, here in this mountaintop experience, this is the moment, this is the opportunity that Peter's been waiting for. If 
Finally, Jesus looks like he's acting like the Messiah. And Peter doesn't want to miss the moment. He doesn't want the moment to end. He wants to build dwellings that will stand as memorials and monuments to this event. I'll admit, I'm just like the rest of you, I like to take pictures. I take pictures of everything. I, I love to take pictures of my, my sons when they were playing sports. I, I wrote about Sam on the bulletin cover this morning. Well, he played football as well. And towards the end of one game, I, I realized I hadn't gotten any real good shots of Sam, so I wanted to take a picture of Sam playing ball. And so I zoomed in the camera, and I was looking through the viewfinder, and I, I got Sam, and oh, I got a couple good pictures. But then everybody around me stood up and cheered, and there, there was all this excitement. And I was looking around, what happened? Well, what happened was our team, Sam's team, had intercepted the ball and scored a touchdown. The game was won in that moment. But I missed it all. I missed all the excitement, all the enthusiasm because I was looking with tunnel vision through my viewfinder just to single out one particular moment and all the stuff going on around me just got by me. I didn't see it. I didn't experience because I was so focused on trying to capture the moment. Peter's looking through a viewfinder. He wants to focus on the glory of the moment. He doesn't want this mountaintop experience to end or ever be forgotten. But rather than build monuments, God says, listen, Peter. Listen, James. Listen, John. There's more to come. There's more to be done than just what's happening in this moment. There are bigger things going on around this moment than what you see right now. In our relationship with Christ, some of us try to live a life of faith based on moments of spiritual highs. We do our best to remain in those moments. We feel that in our faith journey that if we're not emotionally high, if we're not feeling good, if things aren't going great, then, then God can't be in that moment. And we experience some spiritual high in some event or, or some program or, or we, we feel like God can only be experienced that way. We bring it sometimes into the life of the church. And if we don't like the hymns that day, we don't like the sermon that day, we don't like something going on that day, we feel like we haven't been in worship, we haven't had that spiritual high that we needed. We haven't been able to capture that same feeling, that same enthusiasm. We need to remember that it was Jesus and that mountaintop experience which was wonderful, which was glorious, it was He that pointed His disciples back down the mountain. It was He that said to Peter, James, and John, we need to go back to the valley. We need to go back down there where the people are. There are people who are hurting. There are people who need us. There are people who need to hear the good news of my love and my grace and my forgiveness. we got work to do down there. And as they come down off this mountain, as, as you might know the story, as you read further on into to Mark, you, you'll see that they encounter a father with an epileptic son. And the first thing that Jesus does coming off that mountaintop experience is to heal the child. The transition from the mountaintop experience to the healing of the child, for me anyway, connects the glory of Jesus with the power He has to reach down into the brokenness of our lives. You see, God's glory, God's power cannot be contained in dwellings. Through the Holy Spirit, God's power, God's glory, God's love, God's healing is set loose in this world. To meet us wherever we are, in whatever the moment. We often try to capture Christ in the viewfinder. Oh, we want Christ to be something for us that we want Christ to be. Lord, we want you to make us feel good. Lord, we want you to heal us. Lord, I'm in a mess. Get me out of this mess. We want Christ to be for us in that particular moment. Everything we need just for us. 
And if God doesn't perform in that way, we're disappointed. We say Christ is not present. God is not near. I want to suggest to you this morning that spiritual experiences, mountain stop experiences surround us. A spiritual experience is simply a matter of recognizing and acknowledging our relationship with God, our relationship to Christ in any given moment. You see, God is involved in all that we do. God doesn't just show up and then check out. God is with us. God is like the air that we breathe. God's presence is like that surrounding us. A part of our daily life, bringing into us the breath of life that we need to live life to its fullest, no matter from the mountaintop, no matter from the valley, no matter from that stagnant area called the, the mundane activities of daily life. God is present with us in those moments. God says to us, I think He says to us very clearly this morning, stop taking pictures. No pictures, please. Instead, listen to Jesus. Open your eyes to see all the ways that God is at work in your life. Oh, it's okay. Don't leave here this morning and say, oh, that preacher talked about the fact we shouldn't have mountaintop experiences. No, we will have mountaintop experiences. What a wonderful time it is to experience Christ in that way and to celebrate His glory and His goodness in our lives. But what you need to hear is this at the end there. Don't try to capture that moment and claim it over and over and over again because God comes down the mountain to work in the valley, to work in the midst of the mundane. And He's just as present in those moments as He is up on the mountaintop. Christ points us down the mountain. There's more to be done. Christ points us down the mountain saying, I was with you there. But I'll be with you down there as well. No matter what you experience, no matter the moment, be it the highs, the lows, the joys, the sorrows of life, be it simply just the daily routine, I am there. All you have to do is call upon that, my name. It, become, it can become a high spiritual moment as we realize over and over again that God is with us. And not only God sends us down the mountain to be with us, He sends us down the mountain to be with others. Others are in the valley that need to know of His love, that need to know of His healing touch, that need to know of the joy of life that we can receive when we claim Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. No pictures, please. No pictures are necessary. Because Jesus is something that we can celebrate and we can remember in any moment, at any time. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Breathe On Me, Breathe On Me.